Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Sunnah Revival by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari Sunan relating to sexual intimacy Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is Mu'iz Bukhari recording for the Daily Reminder Network. Insha'Allah, this episode and the following one will be about marital intimacy according to the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad But before we delve into the content, I would like to warn the viewers that explicit content in regard to intimacy is about to be discussed. And parents should make sure that children who are not in the age group to be exposed to such content not view this video. For if not, there will be a lot of awkward questions I presume that may need answering. Having said that, I feel that it is of utmost importance that we adults learn about intimacy in the light of Islam, as it is something that many shy away from thinking of it to be a taboo topic, resulting in them being ignorant or becoming ignorant of many issues taught to us by the Prophet ﷺ himself regarding intimacy. Sexual intimacy between spouses is loved and highly encouraged in Islam. It is another great favor indeed from our Maker, Allah Azza wa Jal, that He has not set a blame upon those who lawfully release their desires. But as believers, even at the peak of passion and desire, we must not become blinded by lust and forget our Creator. We must indulge in intimacy with many, many noble intentions and goals ahead such as having a sincere intention of indulging in intimacy with one's spouse as an act of obedience to our Creator, seeking his pleasure by following the teachings of his beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam, as well as to reproduce children and to increase the number of the Muslims, and finally to protect oneself as well as one's spouse from falling into that which is haram, into that which is forbidden. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect us all. Moving on, let's discuss a few sunan and etiquettes regarding marital intimacy. To start off, the two spouses should go into a private room and close the doors and curtains to make sure that no one, not even a small child, will be able to watch them. For covering one's private parts in front of anyone other than one's own spouse is an important obligation in Islam. Next in line is that the two spouses should adorn and beautify themselves for one another. They should brush their teeth and perfume themselves, making sure that no offensive odors come out from them that may put off either one of them. Ibn Abbas anhuma, is reported to have said that I like to beautify myself for my wife as much as I like her to beautify herself for me. The next sunnah in line is that the two spouses should indulge in various acts of foreplay, such as light talk, jokes, love expressions, touching, kissing, caressing, fondling, and so on. The man should not rush into intercourse like a bull in a china shop. He should be kind and gentle with his spouse. Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah states in his famous book, Tibb al-Nabawi, that the Prophet wasallam forbade anyone from engaging in sexual intercourse before foreplay. Ibn Qudama rahimahullah is also reported to have said, it is recommended for the man to caress and fondle his wife prior to intercourse in order to arouse her so that she would get as much pleasure from the intercourse as he does. And it is of utmost importance that the two spouses understand one another's body mechanisms. In other words, how their bodies work. Men get aroused very easily, but Allah Azza wa Jal has created women in a way that they take time to get aroused. A good example that experts cite is that a man is like a microwave oven. Instantly on, instantly off. But a woman is like a traditional oven. She takes time to get aroused and the heat lasts for some time as well. Moving on to the next beautiful sunnah on the list is the dua taught to us by the Prophet ﷺ before intercourse. The narration is in Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said, 
when one of you wants to approach his wife, if he says, Bismillah, Allahumma jannibna shaytan wa jannibi shaytana ma razaqtana. In the name of Allah, O oh Allah, keep the devil away from us and keep him away from what you grant us. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on to say, if it is then decreed, if it is then decreed that they get a child, the devil will never harm that child. Allahu Akbar. The next etiquette on the list is that a man should rush to fulfill his wife's desires and a woman should rush to fulfill her husband's desires. In a narration where the Prophet ﷺ was advising Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As radiallahu an, the narration goes along the lines of these words, O oh Abdullah, I have been informed that you fast the days and stand the nights in prayer. Do not do that because your eyes will become tired and your body sick. So fast on some days and break your fast on others. Get up for prayer and sleep as well. For indeed your body has a right over you, your eyes have a right over you, and your wife has a right over you. And in a narration which has been recorded in Ibn Majah, the Prophet ﷺ is also reported to have said, If a man invites his wife to bed and she refuses to come, and he sleeps angry, the angels curse her until the morning or until her husband becomes pleased with her. The final important etiquette to be followed is that it is permissible to approach one's wife from any side. In the sense, a man may approach his wife from any position that they personally prefer, provided that he has intercourse with his wife only through her vagina. Our maker has decreed that where he states in the Noble Quran, Nisa'ukum harthun lakum, fa'tu harthakum anna hashi'tum, wa qaddimu li anfusikum, wa attaqu allaha, wa attaqu allaha wa'lamu annakum your wives are a place of cultivation for you. So come to your place of cultivation however you wish and put forth righteousness for yourselves. The place of cultivation in the verse indicates that it is only permissible to have intercourse with one's wife in her vagina because this is the only way for the seeds to be cultivated and for her to conceive. As a closing note, it is important that both spouses give priority to one another to keep a healthy sexual relationship going on between them. And the man should make sure that even if he climaxes in a sexual relationship before his spouse, he should make sure that he continues until his spouse climaxes. For if not, that would cause great harm and prevent her from fulfilling her desires. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal that he should bless and protect our marriages and bless those who are not married yet with good spouses and partners who will help them towards pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal. And insha'Allah ta'ala, the next video too will be about certain intimacy issues that are prohibited or in a gray area. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Support the Dawah. Donate now. Go to thedailyreminder.org slash donate.